Recession 2022 is here. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth. Since we first started publishing on YouTube way back in 2009, millions of people have counted on us for years for car buying advice, and we do greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I had no idea that this channel would grow so big and that so many people would appreciate what we do. I could have never predicted it. Now today, regardless of what's happening in the car market, our advice is not to buy, but rather to stay out of the car market and for a very different reason than you might think. So here's why. While we reported recently that a crash is coming in the car market and that is still underway, a much more important piece of news is that the dark clouds of recession in 2022 are upon us. Right now, you should hold your money close and definitely not spend more of it on a rapidly depreciating hunk of metal. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Your family is going to be counting on that money to put food on the table, not to be wasted on a rolling money pit. And if you're not already a follower of somebody like Dave Ramsey, you should be. It's not going to hurt you to learn something. Maybe it will embarrass you a little bit, but you might come out the other side of this recession in better shape and knowing a bit more about smart management of money. In the event you're not sure exactly what we're talking about, let's roll out the definition of a recession because a lot of people honestly have no idea. Don't worry, there's no shame if you don't know. A recession is a period of economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. That's two successive quarters, people. Now listen closely. Gross domestic product, GDP, by industry and corporate profits, first quarter 2022. GDP decreased at an annual rate of 1.6%, according to the third estimate released by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. The GDP now model estimate for a real GDP growth seasonally adjusted annual rate in the second quarter of 2022 is negative 2.1% on July 1st. There's your two declining back-to-back -back quarters. We are in a recession. The economy is tanking in all categories. The prices for everything are up. Sadly, many people looking to retire have lost a lifetime of savings in their 401k this past year. And right now it's costing the average household $327 more per month for the same goods and services they purchased last year. CNBC surveys say that 75% of American households say their income is falling behind their expenses. To avoid politics on our end, let me just say that like many of you, we frequently have been hearing about Putin's price hike from the White House. According to polls, most Americans aren't even buying that, and we're guessing that includes many of you. So let us know in the comment section what you think is the real cause of all these outrageous prices without writing manuscripts about your political theories. So keep it clean too, please. What exactly is the biggest threat to the U.S. economy? The public debt, which now stands at a whopping 74% of GDP, the largest percentage since right after the end of World War II. Oh boy. As our currently low interest rates continue to rise, interest payments on the debt will skyrocket, creating a huge burden on future generations. Now, Liz suggested that perhaps each of you could offer your views in the comment section on why you think prices are sky high right now, but I'd like to interject the thoughts of Milton Friedman, a famous American economist and statistician who received the 1976 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. There's nobody better qualified to answer the inflation question, my friends, and this comes from a man who clearly wasn't talking politics, so don't even attempt to say that this is political. Now the first step toward understanding the cause of inflation is to recognize that it is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. It's always and everywhere a result of too much money, of a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than an output. Moreover, in the modern era, the important next step is to recognize that today governments control the quantity of money. So that as a result, inflation in the United States is made in Washington and nowhere else. Of course, no government any more than any one of us likes to take responsibility for bad things. We're all of us human. If something bad happens, it wasn't our fault. 
And the government is the same way. So it doesn't accept responsibility for inflation. If you listen to people in Washington talk, they will tell you that inflation is produced by greedy businessmen, or it's produced by grasping unions, or it's produced by spendthrift consumers, or maybe it's those terrible Arab sheiks who are producing it. Now, of course, businessmen are greedy. Who of us isn't? Trade unions are grasping. Who of us isn't? And there's no doubt that the consumer is a spendthrift. At least every man knows that about his wife. But none of them produce inflation for the very simple reason that neither the businessman, nor the trade union, nor the housewife has a printing press in their basement on which they can turn out those green pieces of paper we call money. Only Washington has that printing press, and therefore only Washington can produce inflation. Well, so who do you want to believe? A politician who says it's Putin's price hike? Or do you believe the explanation from Milton Friedman, a Nobel Prize winning economist and statistician? Hmm? I don't know where the viewers out there are on this, but I'm going to go with Milton Friedman <laughs> on this one. Politics have nothing to do with facts. Yeah. Too bad for a few whiners out there if the truth stings because of political commitments. Trillions of dollars have been spent and funds for everything under the sun have been pouring out of Washington. As Mr. Friedman pointed out, it's our own government who is to blame for inflation. And we don't need our government printing another red cent. Let's move on to talks of hiring freezes, which is simply more evidence of a recession. Hiring freezes and even layoffs have begun to circulate at financial firms as soaring interest rates and recession fears have tanked appetites for mergers, IPOs, and other big corporate deals, sources told The Post. At an industry luncheon last week, two executives from top banks, including J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley, conversation was dominated by speculation that layoffs will ravage the industry's workforce by at least 10% mm. and that the bloodbath will be in full swing by year's end. Big tech has been hit too. Last week, we watched as headlines of top tech companies either laying off or freezing hiring dominated the news cycles. The Federal Reserve hiked interest rates. The Dow and NASDAQ continued to fall into 2022. And if you're into rumors in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of talk that hiring is slowing and more layoffs are on the horizon there too. Now, it's definitely not the time to be slowing down on your job search. Expand your income opportunities, if anything. But now is definitely the time to be slowing down expenditures on big ticket items like cars. With headlines like this one hitting the news, take notice. Wall Street layoffs likely ahead as two-year hiring boom turns to bust. Here's a few key points. Broad-based job cuts loom at major banks for the first time since 2019. The math is ominous. Headcount at J.P. Morgan's investment bank, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley jumped by 13%, 17%, and 26% during a hiring binge over the last two years. Meanwhile, capital markets revenue has literally fallen off a cliff. <laughs> and a Wall Street recruiter said, when banks have a revenue problem, they're left with one way to respond, and that's by ripping out costs. You know, stopping the bleeding. <laughs> yes. And now a little insight from Wall Street legend Mark Chaikin. He says that while most Americans are praying for an end to COVID-19 and a return to normal life, life is about to get much stranger and it could have a sizable impact on your wealth. Well, you might say, I don't have wealth, so that's covered. No, not so fast. Over 2 million normal people have already lost their cars to repossessions. Millions more will still happen. Some of you are going to lose your homes too, sadly enough. So for God's sake, the last thing you should be doing right now is looking for another car to buy. Keep your hard-earned money. The average car payment for gosh shakes is now over $700 a month. Nobody needs a rapidly depreciating upside-down debt on their hands entering a recession. And an undisputed fact to know, folks, evidence shows that 100% of repossessed cars had car loans on them and 100% of foreclosed homes had mortgages on them. <laughs> and some of you still wonder why we always preach pay cash and at times like this, that advice is really solid. It's great to be cash fluid. If you learned something today, you'd like to say thanks for a video with a tip. The links appearing on the screen now will be easy to find down below. And if you appreciated the video, we'd appreciate you giving us a great big thumbs up. And please comment and share with family and friends. And if you're not already on board with us, 
Don't forget to subscribe. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's exactly what we strive to do in every video we produce. The bottom line of today's video, stay out of the car market unless it's a total emergency and you absolutely have no way to get to work. This concludes another Homework Guy video. By the way, if you do have cash to buy and make sure it's extra cash and you definitely need a car, do not miss seeing this video featuring the amazing Elizabeth and her detailed explanation for how to handle a cash deal properly. It was done in February last year, but totally spot on for today's car market. One of the best videos we've ever produced. Thanks for that, Liz. Oh, sure. It is a must see for any cash buyer. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.